The Texans have been pretty close to spectacularly bad this year, even with Deshaun Watson. The problem is they don't have a first or second round pick. What's up everybody, Adam Kramer here with the game day, ready to do a little stock up, stock down, and stock to watch after week 10 of the NFL season. Before I do that, however, a reminder, uh, really want you guys to engage us on social media, we're all over the place, so comment, share, subscribe, everything you can, tell your friends about it if you like the content, tell us what you think of our opinions, are they good, are they bad, am I an idiot, I could take it, right, I want to hear that stuff, I've heard worse, I promise you that, and then the other thing I want to mention, our gambling podcast later in the week before you make your NFL plays at least listen to what we have to say we're gonna get you set we're gonna keep it lighthearted it's gonna be informative before you go and figure out who you want to bet this week uh, we promise you're gonna learn something from what we're talking about you may not agree with all our picks but you're gonna have fun listening to it and uh, again check that out later in the week really really enjoying doing that so uh, thus far myself and Marcus Mosier okay on to stock up. We always like to keep things positive out of the gate. Stock up this week is the old guys. I wish I could just keep it at that. The old guys. Doesn't sound very positive, but the old guys. Specifically, NFL veteran QBs. They had themselves a week. Now, the definition of veteran can vary wildly here, but here's what I'm going to include in this. I'm going to include Philip Rivers, who won on Thursday against the Titans. Okay? I, I called that game, by the way, in our podcast. Um, no big deal. Tom Brady. Ben Roethlisberger, Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, all winners, combined stat line, 15 touchdowns, one interception. The one interception, by the way, came from Aaron Rodgers. Of course it did. The best player on here, don't want to get to the whole Don Brady thing. I'm saying right now the best player on here uh, is Aaron Rodgers. Probably going to make somebody mad there along the way, but that's fine. We are all in agreement that the old guys played well. Phillip Rivers, 300 yards and a touchdown. Tom Brady, 340 yards, four touchdowns after that awful performance against New Orleans. A couple of those throws, it's like, oh, is this it? No, Brady still got something left. Big Ben didn't practice all week due to the COVID situation. Four touchdowns, 330 yards. Aaron Rodgers, 325 yards, three touchdowns. What he does, one interception. And Stafford, 276 yards and three touchdowns against Washington in a wild game. Now, what does this mean? Okay, for weeks, weeks, literally weeks, I have been telling you, at the game day, how much I love the young quarterbacks that we have in the NFL. Okay, Patrick Mahomes is in there. Josh Allen is in there. Kyler Murray. Uh, we, we did a debate last week. whether Are we taking Kyler Murray or Joe Burrow or Justin Herbert or Tua? It's hard, right? It's a really tough discussion because all of these guys look like they're going to be great in their own way. I love the youth movement, and I think there's going to be really good quarterbacks, and we got more coming, by the way, from college. So I think youth in the NFL at the position is really strong, and the future is bright. However... These guys have been doing it, man. These guys have been doing it for years. The results can be mixed. You've had injuries in between there. Um, but when I look at this list, you, the thing that comes to mind is you're going to be seeing them. There's playoff teams. Indy could make the playoffs with Phillip Rivers. Tom Brady, Tampa Bay. Playoffs seem very, very likely. Pittsburgh, where where did this come from? I knew this was a good team, but this is an undefeated team. Big Ben looks absolutely fabulous. Of course, the Packers have been great. You know, a little too close to call, I guess, the Jaguars, but still, Aaron Rodgers played well. Stafford, probably not. By the way, Drew Brees and the Saints, they did win, but Brees got hurt in that game, so I can't take credit for that. But these are going to be playoff teams, and as much as I love the youth in this sport, I do have to say, it feels good to see some of the guys that have been doing it and putting up these monstrous numbers continue to do it. And I hope they continue to do it. I hope they stay healthy. And if they do, I think they can be really dangerous. There's something to be said about that talent and that experience and, and what that can provide. So stock up for the NFL vets. We'll see how it translates here in the weeks ahead and, and certainly in the playoffs. Stock down. Bill O'Brien. I can tell you this. It is not good. Okay? It's, it's usually not good. It's almost certainly not going to be good. When you are not coaching or not active, and you start trending on Twitter on a Sunday. It's probably not good. Chances are, Twitter is not actively saying how great you are or were, if that's the instance. So keep that in mind. Twitter is tough. But in Bill Bro Bill O'Brien's instance, this was not a great Sunday. Now granted, earlier this year, fired as GM, fired as coach. By the way, don't do that. Don't do that, NFL teams. Don't make a GM the coach the same guy. Two different positions, 
two very thing, hard things to do. It's just not, it's just not good. That's quick aside. But here's why Bill O'Brien was trending on Sunday. DeAndre Hopkins came down with one of the best catches of the year. A Hail Mary winner for the Arizona Cardinals from Kyler Murray. Big comeback against the Bills. Uh, awesome game. Exciting play. DeAndre Hopkins goes up against three defenders. Comes down, catches it. He does what DeAndre Hopkins does. DeAndre Hopkins was traded for a second round pick in David Johnson. Okay, a second round pick. This is an elite wide receiver that he traded for a second round pick. It drew criticism at the time. And when he came down with that, it was like a flood on social media, a reminder of that, of how non-pleased uh, people were, probably Texans fans. But that's not all, okay? The outcome of that Texans game, also not great. So he was the coach. Texans lose an ugly game to the Browns. And I mean ugly. The weather was ugly. There was no scoring in that game. I do want to do a bonus stock down. If you had the Browns, uh, like minus four and a half, Nick Chubb running into the end zone, darts out of the one-yard line so they can take an E and win by three, that's a bonus stock down. If you bet that, I'm really sorry. Uh, not as bad, probably, as Bill O'Brien's day, but not great for your uh, bankroll. So bonus stock down there. But Bill O'Brien, the Texans lose in this game pretty woefully. They've been bad all year. And here's the bad part. Okay, being bad in the NFL can be good. Okay, we talked last week about the Jets being so bad that it, they could be spectacular by being bad because they, they, they seek out Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields or whoever. You have to be spectacularly bad. The Texans have been pretty close to spectacularly bad this year. Even with Deshaun Watson, the problem is they don't have a first or second round pick. They're traded that away. Bill O'Brien specifically traded that away to the Dolphins in the Laramie Tunsil trade. So you are losing, and you are losing with no parachute, no light at the end of the tunnel. That's what the NFL draft picks do. When you're really bad, that's like the pat on the back that says, yeah, man, your team's really bad. But guess what? You've got this. They don't have that. I'm not saying Bill Bryan is completely to blame for all of this, but it did feel like all of that coming together at once, not great. The good news for Bill O'Brien, he's living that buyout life. Getting paid millions of dollars, not coach. He's probably golfing right now, right? Who's who's got the last laugh here? Is it him or is it me? Not me, right? That dude's doing all right, despite the fact that trending on Twitter, not coaching, not jamming, not a good thing. All right, last one. Stock to watch. Okay, thought about this a lot, right? Thought about this one a lot. There's a lot of really interesting things going on in the NFL, but the, the, the specific one that I'm focused on right now is the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm really intrigued by that, okay? I laughed. Speaking of last laugh, I laughed at the John Gruden hire and the amount of money they were paying him, the years, etc. I have to say, through at least right now, that hire looks like a success. This is a good team. They're 6-3. and three. They're coming off another win. Um, they've got some really good pieces. They've let up 44 points in the last three games. They beat the Chiefs earlier this year. They're going to play the Chiefs again on Sunday Night Football this, uh, this week. I can't wait for that. They've got Josh Jacobs, who I covered at Alabama, one of my favorite college players ever, who's just an absolute workhorse back, coming off 100 yards and two touchdowns. they got one of the best tight ends in, in the world, in Waller, just an absolute physical freak and just a matchup nightmare. They've got good wideouts that could become great in, in Renfro and Ruggs, guys that played each other in college that I think overall could develop, and I think Ruggs could be really, really special if he can stay healthy. They... They're just, they're just really great. They're not statistically awesome, and this is why I kind of want to watch them. But I love the way the defense is played, and I love the way that some of these pieces are responding. The question to this team is Derek Carr, right? What are you going to get from him? Now, he's been good this year. He's been efficient. He doesn't dazzle you. He's not a fantasy, like, uh, master class quarterback, 16 touchdowns, two interceptions. Not bad, right? What is he going to be in the playoffs? You're in the same division as the Chiefs, which, by the way, is a massive game. So what is he going to be? Is he going to win you games? Is he going to lose you games? I, I don't know what he's going to be. And that's kind of the big thing with this team. But I really love a lot of their pieces. And I think it's coming together at the right time. And here's who they have, by the way, after the Chiefs. The team that they beat. it has got to be some confidence there. They play the Falcons. They play the Jets. They play the Colts. They play the Chargers. They play the Dolphins. They play the Broncos. Dolphins, tough. Colts, intriguing. Falcons, maybe. I don't know. But that's a pretty manageable schedule. So, can they uh, beat out the Chiefs to win the division? I think that's a tall order.
But still, I think this is the playoff team. I think this is a team that can mess around and beat somebody. I think the rest of that conference is wide open. I think they can win some games. I think a lot of it boils down to Carr. But I, I got to say, Gruden, Mayock, that contingent there, they've been on a roll. They've won three in a row. And if they, if they beat the Chiefs, by the way, this stock to watch is going to change. It's going to be a massive stock up. Very interested to see what they do. Really interested to see what those young players do as they develop. Going to watch the Raiders. Certainly going to watch Raiders Chiefs. It's going to be a heck of a game. All right, guys. For Adam Kramer, at the game day, follow us, track us, comment with us, do all of those things. We will talk to you guys very, very, very soon.